I'm back with a new video on Luckin Coffee and this is due to the fact that many of you viewers have been commenting on my previous video that you actually would like to see it still covered as well as some of my patrons sent me messages that they want an update on Luckin Coffee. And this update is going to be quite special because I'm asking you as a viewer to help me with Luckin Coffee investor relations. But more on that later. First, what a day yesterday. As outlined in my last video, I was expecting a big healthy correction of the markets and this is what we got. This trading range here of this tunnel, however, already more on the upside. So I do expect maybe this week already uh, some healthy pullback of the markets. So despite all the good news around Neo deliveries and Elon Musk visiting Berlin and other places in Germany, while well, the stock prices of these stocks tanked, and as outlined in my post to my patrons, I was trying something new with this incoming correction that I was anticipating. And this time I actually went short and tried to hedge my portfolio because uh, my overview is that I'm going to stay invested in this market. I think this bull market will continue, but this correction was overdue. So I went short on some Apple stocks because Apple was running high due to the stock split as well, similar to Tesla, as well as Apple due to this big market cap is a quite big company in the index funds so I thought okay if the overall market's gonna crash that surely drags down Apple as well and luckily it was quite successful I made 4x on my money on this hedge and so I made some money on the way downward here. If you have some experience on hedging your portfolio, I would be interested to know more about this in the comments below because I'm actually frankly new to that. Usually I don't short any stocks. Personally, I'm just interested in investing long in the markets. However, in order to balance my portfolio and have some risk management here, like for big down days like yesterday, I really like to make some money on these days. So yesterday we finally had this correction. The markets went down. Um, I think, yeah, we saw some buyers coming in. So actually I think hopefully it will be bouncing from here. I took off my hedges. I completely sold them already. Uh, so from here I'm going long into the markets. I'm expecting the bull run to continue. And of course now all the people who went short from March and are sitting on cash, uh, they are screaming about a possible crash coming. However, I think it's more likely that the bull run just continues from here and that this just was a healthy corrections in the markets. This however is only how I'm personally treating the market. So this is not investment advice as everything in this video. You need to make your own decisions and need to come up with your own ideas about trading. Okay now finally back to Luck and Coffee which had a decisive day on September the 2nd because they had a new extraordinary shareholder meeting. I was writing a blog post on Patreon about this and actually lots of my viewers expressed um, their interest in covering the story. And what I want to do with this video is not only covering what has happened on this shareholder meeting, but also actually asking you to become active because I think now it is the time to actually confront Luckin Coffee um, with our questions as retail investors, but more on that later. Because to sum things up, what has happened so far is obviously that there has been a fraud happening with Luckin Coffee and then Luckin Coffee got delisted. Lots of investors, both institutional as well as retail investors, got hammered by the fact that Luckin Coffee was delisted and we never really had a response by Luckin Coffee but that might be due to the fact that there has been an ongoing fight of uh, who is actually running the company and who has been actually at the core of this fraud. So let's have a quick recap where it ended last time. So we had a new CEO, Zinigo, who is running the company, replacing Jenny Tian, uh, as well as uh, the ex-COO, Tian Liu, who was also fired because he was the operating person in charge of this fraud, actually. And then this is how the board was actually looking back then with Charles Lu Zhengyao, who is actually the architect of this fraud um, and then um, the other board members, um, some of the earlier investors. Uh, and we've seen that, um, yeah, there was this golden triangle between David Hui Li, um, Ar Hai Liu and Lu Zhong Yao, who have previously actually uh, been involved in a other venture in which they also committed fraud. And on the operational side, we had this uh, operational team who was responsible for the fraud and seemingly instructed by Lu Zhong Yao. So this is the fraud team at Luck and Coffee. And what we've seen in the past is that um, all of those board and advisors, except for Mr. Y, 
Bai Yuan Chong have actually been removed or have actually resigned. So that has been the last extraordinary shareholder meeting in which uh, Lu Zhenyao was actually calling for it and um, made sure that those kind of people were actually removed or replaced, uh, including himself. So that was actually his plot twist and his trick of trying to get a grasp of the company. Because what he also did is that he instilled uh, Jin Yiguo, who has been an old friend of Lu Zhenyao and who was the new acting CEO, as well as new independent directors uh, that got in voted um, by the committee that are basically shills or actors uh, on the request of Mr. Lu Zhenyao. That was actually his plan of going away from this company, but at the same time staying in control of what is happening. Even though he actually has been removed as a person and he lost lots of his shares due to this margin call and so on. However, as outlined in previous videos, I was always hoping for a management cleanup, so a new start for Luckin Coffee. And I found it interesting that actually the CFO and CIO Hendrik Schakel um, so far seems to be not affected by the fraud. Um, of course, you could allege that he must have known of the fraud but so far um, there are no accusations against him and it seems like um, he just didn't know about it but um, this is all speculation. I don't know it for a fact and um, in general there has been no news on what is his role in the fraud but so far well he doesn't seem to be affected. So what has happened in between? Well we see that the new independent directors that have been put in place by Lu Zhenyao have both resigned. So there is a cleanup of the board happening. And then uh, Luckin Coffee announced actually that they're going to do this uh, meeting, the extraordinary shareholder meeting on the 2nd of September, which obviously happened now. And since then, we've seen a couple more changes. So uh, we see that uh, the new independent director, Sean Shao, uh, who has been previously already on the board, he has been the lead of the internal investigation of Luckin Coffee. So he was actually pushing forward of cleaning up and investigating the company. Uh, and he has now been voted back into the board as well as new independent directors replacing the shills of Lu Zhenyao. And we also see that um, uh, Jin Yiguo, who is still part of the connections of Lu Zhenyao, he is not the managing director of Luckin Coffee Beijing Limited anymore. He still is... Um, the managing director of the holding, the um, Luckin Coffee China entity, so that's a different entity though. However, we also see that uh, Gang Wu as well as Wan Dao Cao um, are now also managing directors of the company. So in general, this looks a little bit like a cleanup is happening here, right? Because we see that important positions that have connections to Lu Zhenyao are actually being removed. So the last man standing that has connections to Lu Zhenyao actually seems to be Jin Yigo. However, he seems to be losing his um, acting stake as a CEO here, um, becoming partly replaced or um, at least other people are also filling the managing director role. And in the middle, we still have Mr. Hendrik Scharkel, who is signing off all the SEC filings. However, we don't know anything new about him, even though he is the CFO, he's the CIO. And uh, we haven't heard anything about him yet. So this is what this video is all about. So I still think there may be a slight chance that Hendrik Scharkel is actually organizing this cleanup in the background here of Luckin Coffee. Uh, so far, he hasn't been affected, as I mentioned. However, he's also not coming out and speaking about it, possibly due to the fact that there are investigations going on, maybe due to the fact that Lu Zhengyao still controls partly the board and uh, the, the acting CEO and so on. However, for retail investors, this long months and weeks of silence have been actually a complete disaster because we are actually, you know, in this black box. We don't know what's going on in the company. We don't have uh, actual financials. We don't have the investigation report. And also the SEC filings are not enough without any public relations of luck and coffee. So I think this has to change. I think Luckin Coffee has finally to come forward and to provide more information to investors. And what I actually did is I was reaching out to the company that is actually running the media relations as well as the investor relations of Luckin Coffee. As you can see with all of those filings and press releases, at the bottom of each release, you can actually find the investor relation and media contacts. And this is run by a company called ICR Inc. And um, yeah, if you go to the company, you will see that they supported a couple of US IPOs from Asia, including Luckin Coffee. And this is a company that is running strategic communications and advisory. And to be honest, I'm 
totally not satisfied of how this investor relations has been run, especially during the times when Luckin Coffee was actually delisted and, you know, everything has been um, quite chaotic, to be honest. So I reached out to them with the goal of connecting and actually being able to talk to investor relations and um, ask them more details on what is actually going on behind the scenes with Luckin Coffee. As I didn't get a reply to my emails to the company, I actually was digging a little bit deeper and was looking at who is actually running uh, the operations here on the China side. So for Asia Pacific, it's Mr. Lokoko. And I actually um, tracked him down on LinkedIn and I wrote him a personal message there on LinkedIn. And I and I'm not going to publish my private conversation with him due to privacy issues here. However, what I can tell you is that he actually denied that he is working with Luckin Coffee, which I found to be a blatant lie because I was seeing on his LinkedIn page that he was actually posting about an event where he invited Mr. Rainer Chaco to speak to investors. So that was clearly managed by him and his company. In the end, this guy even blocked me on LinkedIn when I was confronting him with the fact that his company is actually signing off the Luckin Coffee investor relations here. So the work that they are doing here, in my point of view, is kind of useless for investors like you and I. And this is why I think we need to take um, this issue in our own hands. And this is what I'm going to do today. So instead of going through this advisory and investor relations firm, I will be contacting uh, Luck and Coffee and to be exact, Raina Chaka directly. And I want you to be part of that. And in order to do that, I prepared a little survey because I want to pull um, us as retail investors here and asking anonymously, like, how many shares of Luckin Coffees are you holding right now? So, so if you're going to go and do the survey, you can enter the amount of shares you're holding, for instance, 10. And then let me know at what average cost in US dollars you're holding. So let's say you bought them at 30 US dollars a share. And maybe some of those investors out there already um, sold some of the shares, for instance, when Luckin Coffee got delisted. So um, I want to know how many shares have you've been selling so far. So for instance, you've sold 1000 shares at a price of four US dollars a share. And then I am asking you about what would be your question to the CFO and CIO Rainer Charco. For instance, you want to know um, what are the prospects of a relisting at NASDAQ. So you can write anything that comes up to your mind here and let me know. And if there's anything else that I have forgotten with this survey, do let me know here. Otherwise, uh, you can just send it off and then uh, finish the survey here. So, And I already posted this survey with my patrons and so far we got 10 replies. So um, yeah, a couple of people have posted like how many shares they're owning and at which price. And also a couple of questions already to Mr. Rainer Scharko. So for instance, when is the expected date for disclosing the latest results? Uh, what are the plans to come up with a new cleaned up board of directors. Um, then some more questions are when does he expect for Luckin Coffee to get relisted on Nasdaq? Any time frame for the financial update and so on. So all of the questions you have basically send them to me. Uh, I will be pooling those questions and take the most important ones as well as the information about uh, how many shares we are actually pooling here as retail investors. Uh, and my idea here is to confront Luck and Coffee and Mr. Rainer Schakel directly with this information. I hope he will take it seriously, as I'm sure that we can actually find a quite a significant number of shareholders here and, and also quite a substantial amount of shares being owned here by retail investors. And then I will let you know how it goes. Will he reply to it? Will he even possibly um, be able to come on this channel and maybe make a quick Zoom meeting and discuss those questions openly. Um, as you know, my channel has been quite fair. I'm not following the short seller narrative on Luck and Coffee here. So there is no better way of actually coming out and um, building up a new trusted investor relation of Luck and Coffee with a broader audience, retail investors first, maybe institutional investors second. Um, I think this should be the way forward. And now with the changes possibly of the board and also on the operational stuff and possibly hopefully a cleanup here happening. Um, this should be the right time for Mr. Rainer Charco to finally inform the investors because this has been silence for too long and I hope now we can actually break the silence. And what this means for Luckin Coffee and possibly you as a shareholder or for other investors 
I cannot tell you. Um, you need to come up with your own thoughts and views on that. What are the prospects of this company in the long run? What is actually the, the value of Luck and Coffee in case that they really clean up the management team? Is there a possibility for a new start? This is all up to speculation for now. However, I hope with this step of actually reaching out to Luck and Coffee, to Mr. Rainer Charcoal directly, to the CFO, to the CIO, I hope that he will reply to us and that this could actually be one of the first steps into the right directions so let's see how it goes and with that i hope you have a good weekend and stay tuned for more content on neo on luck and coffee on other chinese ipos and companies that have a really big exposure to the chinese market so thank you guys for watching see you in the next one and bye